All right. Good evening, everyone. It is Thursday, March 21st, the uh, select board meeting. I call to order. Uh, please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, announcements. Uh, the Brookfield Ecumenical Food Pantry at St. Mary's is seeking donations of condiments, paper products, liquid hand soap, shampoo, and laundry detergent. <coughs> Items may be dropped off Wednesday and Saturdays from 9.30 to 11 a.m. at the Food Pantry at St. Mary's Church at the corner of Lincoln and Howard Street. And uh, once again, I'd like to remind everyone that the correct spelling of my name is Regan. R-E-G-A-N. <laughs> All right. Brad, could you do the warrants, please? Sure. Uh, signed warrants, FY2418, payroll, $194,493.37. FY2418, withholding $67,095.99. FY2418, accounts payable, $854,163.56. All right, thank you, sir. Um, Ms. Coughlin uh, sent us a note saying that she was going to be late, and it's a fairly full agenda, so um, she'll catch up when we get here. Um, and uh, given that uh, she was lead on the Sun Fusions HCA, Brad, I'll take a motion to uh, take th uh, the yeah. agenda out of order. Um, so moved. All right, thank you. I'll second that. And all in favor of uh, taking the agenda out of order, please say aye. 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 All right, thank you. All right, so uh, let's see. So, security camera, sir. Is that what you want to do? I chopped it up a different way to get other people out of here. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll, t I'll take a suggestion. Uh, okay. What do you got? Uh, garden Club. Garden Club. Get them out first. <laughs> All right. Then we'll do the Garden Club. Dennis, you're here for the Garden Club? Yes. All right. So why don't you come up here? We, we can get you out of here. All right. Thank you. So as I'm sure many of you know, the Brookfield Garden Club maintains the perennial garden on the triangle at the common. And I'm here to request permission that we'd like to put signs on each side of the triangle stating that it's maintained by the Brookfield Garden Club and we're open to maybe increase membership and get some recognition as to that we do that and maintain it. And I'm here to ask for permission to put those signs. We haven't designed the signs yet because I was waiting to see if it was okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I'm fine with that in, in principle. It's just just how big are the how big do you, you have expect to, the you have to then to comply be? with the zoning bylaws? Though. Yeah, we were thinking yeah. of a small, like less than two foot by two foot, and not more than like two feet off the ground on each side of the triangle. So three sides of the triangle. Yeah. Okay. Each side sign that says maintained by Brookfield Garden Club, but small signs, mm -hmm. not very high off the ground. Yeah, similar. Uh, where one thirty one in Sturbridge, where one thirty one and twenty intersect. If you're coming up one thirty one, I've yeah. seen signs in that island area to the left. Okay. I'll similar to that. Awesome. Yeah, probably. I, okay. I haven't seen those, but yeah, it's just a, just small signs. Yeah, it's it's smaller than a typical campaign sign. It's yeah. going to be lower to the ground. Yeah, it'd be discreet just to let people know that we maintain it. Okay. I was going to say, it's like... We can just give him the permission, then he's got to comply he with... He made a motion. He has to comply with zoning. Right, regardless of right. Yeah, and probably historic. I don't know, because it's on the common. It would be advisable to check with the Historical Commission because the, the retaining the historical aspect of that area okay. is very important. Yes. Um, so if you check with them about the signage prior to finalizing the design. Okay. That, yeah. that would bring in all that. Sounds yeah. good. And then if you and when you have the design finalized, if you could send it to us, and then sure. that way we can say, yeah, that's consistent with what we thought, and if not, we can let you know we have some concerns, and we can discuss those before you send them to print. Sounds good. All right. So other than that, I will take a motion. Make a motion for to allow a garden club to put up signs at the triangle. <laughs> All right. Uh, I will second that. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Just waiting. Can I raise a point of order? Um, you briefly, Mr. Keller. At the beginning of the meeting, you didn't ask who was recording me. I just like to go up for some oh. Right. oh, thank you, uh, Mr. Keller. Thank you for that reminder. Um, I will. Um, I uh, let's see. Um, I will note that the meeting is being recorded by the town. And uh, if anyone else is recording the meeting, would you please identify yourself? Brookfield and Sandberg is recording the meeting. Okay. All right. I have two people. There we go. Anyone else? No. All right. Thank you. Um, 
Karen, can, can we make sure that gets in the yeah, announcements? That's like, I just, I just go with what's in front of me. It's not a habit yet. All right, Brad. What, These uh, are all just suggestions. Well, I was no. going to say Don Taft next, but he's not here. So. No, he, yeah, he won't be here <laughs> for a while. It's like, and then for, for yeah, Three, for that. Or do we want to do, well, Dave Brown's going to be here. Uh, let's see. Uh, why don't we handle the COA resignation? Up. Yeah, sure. Let's, let's just yep. do administrative yep. stuff until yep. that gets here. Yep. All right, so uh, Barbara Clancy has resigned. That's unfortunate. And she was the, uh, yeah, she was on the COA. She wasn't the um, administrator, was she? No. Yeah, I can't. I am she just, was the chair. Yeah. She was the chair. All right. Then uh, I think we will accept her resignation with regret. And I'm sorry. She was a co chair. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> She was the chair for many, many years and then became co chair with Patty. Mm hmm. Okay. All right. So we'll take the, so take a motion to accept her resignation with regret. Um, motion with regret. I don't think we need to make a motion. Okay. But no, you don't accept her resignation. They can quit even if you don't. I'm, <laughs> I'm acknowledging them. Okay. To acknowledge your resignation with regret. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's the word I was looking for. All right. I will, uh, you made the motion. Yes. Then I will second it. All in favor of acknowledging it with regrets, please say aye. 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 Thank you. All right. Garden. Wait. I checked off that. number 13 and I meant to check off number 9. And so. Uh, let's see. Acknowledge fire department reports. I think that's nice and quick and easy to keep them busy. They do seem to roll a lot to assist the EMS crew. Brad, can you give us a motion? Um, motion to acknowledge the fire department reports for the January and February 2024. All right, I will second that. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, we'll save select board minutes for later. Um, and then... Done, done. Um, I don't know if there's anything else we want to get started on without. Yeah, you can appoint your committee. Yes. I was going to say. All right. Do you want me to just make a motion? Conse well, Do we one, have one, any I, one, uh, item agen agenda item number nine the Conservation Commission appointment of Sarah Campbell. It's, uh, let's see. So, so, make a motion to appoint Sarah Campbell to the Conservation Commission. All right, yeah. I will second that. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And there we go. Mr. Kelleher, does this bring you up to uh, full step, full, fully equipped on your on the Conservation Commission, or do you still have vacancies? Unfortunately, we are still, still <laughs> one member short, Mr. Reagan. All right, thank you. I'm, let's see, I think the uh, Town Administrator's Search Committee, we can, you want to try and do that one? Sure. Brad? Yeah, we can. All right. So the, um, the members for the uh, Town Administrator uh, Committee appointments, um, Jeffrey Clark, Charles Blanchard, Mary Lou Knight, Mike Seary, Lori Barkas with Peter Martell as an alternate, and Bruce Clark as an alternate. Uh, so moved. All right. I will second that. All in favor of the uh, of appointing and uh, hold, hold one second. Uh, Kelly, do we have a charge for them as a committee? Yes, we do. It was it's the same charge as before. Okay, um, we've already we've already voted a charge. We Karen. already voted it, and I changed it. The only change was that it was five and two alternates as opposed to seven. But it's the same charge. They're going to um, recommend two to three candidates to the board. And okay. And where where do we stand on the applications? We have a bunch of applications. Mm -hmm. I think it's 16. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't know if we want to wait for Beth or what your opinion is. I mean, can we just to cut the time? Wait for what? I mean, can the select board just, if there's a bunch of applications, then can no, this, no. Just the search committee. Okay. Do the search committee, the search committee. We'll do that. <laughs> do the applications, Beth yeah. does the first round of interviews. We're good. Okay. 
All right. So, so my motion still stands. That, yes, I, I just want I just want to make sure we weren't appointing to a committee that had not been charged. No. Yeah. All right. So the motion yeah. is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That that makes sense. And so the motion is to appoint the uh, people listed to the committee as described. Um, all in favor of appointing the uh, people to the town administrative search committee, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Lots of. Do we want to just go over the cameras? Uh, hold on a second. Someone's sure. coming in, and it's about time. <coughs> it's in the window for Beth to arrive. Or is that the uh, furnace guy? What's that, Karen? Oh, the, the, that's, that's, that's a discussion. That's a discussion for the whole board. Mm -hmm. um, there's something you want to ask Cassie. Milling about. Is something wrong with the heat? Yeah. Uh, the heat upstairs. There's an issue with the heat upstairs, oh. and so we're waiting for the. Uh, Tassie was on their way. All right, and it's going to. Yes, I, I tried to look at this last night, and for, my computer would not show the PDF, so I couldn't read. Oh, well, I, good. Uh, yes, I could. I couldn't read that. It's like, and then today was a busy work day. So, all right. So we we will move on to the uh, cable uh, agenda item number three: cable studio equipment. And uh, this is a quote to bring the uh, to bring it up to snuff. Yes. Paid for out of the uh, cable peg funds, or yes. All right. And now that I can read it. And software licenses. Jacob, yeah. I have some questions on this. Could you come up? Yeah, sure. Thank you, sir. Sure. Um, my, my question is, uh, some of this appears to be equipment and some of this appears to be licenses and services. And yes. so the, uh, the total is $37,000 and a little bit more, under $37,100. And then, do you have an idea of how much of this is um, one-off versus how much of this is recurring? Um, I haven't looked at it recently, and I don't have it in front of me. Um, I don't know if you could. I can start my copy. Thank you. Okay, yes, so it's... Um, Around um, eight thousand dollars, pretty close to eight thousand dollars, is 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 recurring in the sense that it's like you pay for credits, and then as the credits get spent down, we then refill them. Um, those are for things like live captioning, um, as well as video on demand. So broadcasting to the website, broadcasting to YouTube, broadcasting mm -hmm. to Facebook. But if we don't use them, um, they don't expire. So it's, it's really, we're going to have to figure it out once we start broadcasting to those channels, mm -hmm. uh, what that sort of replenishment rate is going to look like. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's basically, it's an initial stake of expendable supplies for, uh, for, for a not exactly accurate, but catches the gist. Exactly. Right. Yeah. right. Okay. And, they, and they based it on um, towns of similar size once they went to video on demand and captioning. 
mm -hmm. what those kind of costs look like. Yeah. Was the intention to give us take us with about a year's worth of about how long? I guess I rather than put terms in your mouth. Yeah, yeah. So that's exactly right. So the estimate was about a year, um, but I actually think that it's a little overzealous. So um, because we only are really filming. Uh, one one meeting every couple weeks because mm -hmm. it's just this meeting. But if we were to expand and hold more meetings here, film more, then that would give us about a year's worth. Okay, so it's 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 one year at a higher burn rate than what we're executing now. But Correct. the thought is, with new equipment, we may find it easier and have an appetite to film more. Right, and my understanding is um, we're looking at putting some sort of a video recording equipment in this in this room to kind of film more meetings, so that would allow us to be able to do that if we wanted to. Yeah, that is one of the things being discussed. Okay. All right, and then, and then is this just a, and so this is, going, this is new equipment to allow us to do video processing, video editing? Correct. And, so and also? Yeah, um, so it'll, it'll automate mm -hmm. a lot of the um, editing, captioning, and sort of piecing everything together and putting it out, broadcasting it. Okay. Um, in a much more streamlined way than the current system does. Yeah, fewer volume, few, fewer hours by people working, and so, and given that we have plenty of money in the peg fund and not a uh, circuit of volunteers to do the work, it does make sense to make it easier so that the volunteers we have, or the paid, the staff we have, can do more in that amount of time. Sure. Okay. Brad, do you have any questions? Or Beth, we're on agenda number three. The uh, yep. Yeah. I up on I got a couple of questions that yeah. I can ask. Them later. No, you can. You start with your questions. No, so there. Give you time to catch up. If you want. Um, <coughs> the cable studio in the school. I mean, we can. I can talk to him about this after. Yeah, you can talk about yeah. that after. Okay. So, <clears throat> at some point, we can probably clear a lot of that out. Right. Depending on, on mm -hmm. what we're doing. And, and then. The inventory of things that are no longer used. Yeah, I saw that email. And I'll start going through and that. And then, I know it was something I talked about, but I don't know if we officially talked about it or not. Um, what about the thought or idea of having like a TV set up in here? So like if we're going through things, it displays for the audience. Oh, like... Um, That's not part of this. Yeah. Right, no, I know. That's yeah. what I'll talk is, about that later. Right, so this is upgrading <laughs> the equipment that aged out the right. year before you bought it. Right. Yep. So. Right, yeah. Um, I do have a pl I mean, I do have plans can, for all can, of that, yeah. but yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we can, and that's actually something we should talk about relative to annual town meeting as well. We <coughs> talked about if we wanted to do annual town meeting upstairs, if we can't get a lift in or and we don't get an elevator that's in. That's part of a separate grant. We yeah, we have the grant. We're going out today. The, who's posted today? Oh, really? Yeah. 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 And where will this equipment be located at the studio at the elementary school? Correct. Okay, yeah, that was my guess. Yeah, in that server rack that's, that's mm -hmm. there. Okay, I don't think, I think I've been in it once and I it was just briefly. Yeah, yeah. It's it was a, after town meeting last year. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice space, so mm -hmm. we can keep using it. All right, All right I'm good. Beth? Mm -hmm. No, actually, this is something that's long overdue, so mm -hmm. I'm glad we've got at least a nominal plan in front of us. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Then I'll take a and motion. This is, and this can, so I'll make a motion that we approve uh, this uh, as presented. Second. All right. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, seeing as there's none, all in favor of signing the uh, approving and signing the uh, contract with Telview, please say aye. 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 Thank the board for their time. All right, thank you, Jacob. And let's see, let me sign this. Does Mr. Keller go next? Uh, let's see. Well, I think I think Mr. Uh, Mr. Fromm's been waiting, okay. and so yeah, let's, we'll let's we'll jump back to the order that. that's yeah. here. Okay. All right. So uh, agenda item agenda item number one: Sun Fusions host community agreement. Um, Mr. Fromm, would you care to join us? And 
uh, Beth, you've been lead on this, so I'm going to follow your lead. Well, I have been lead on this, except when I tried to contact KP this morning in order to get a copy of where we were at, inclusive of some optional clauses. I was told you had been in contact with KP, and they didn't send me anything. I have talked to Michelle at KP. I did not talk at, about the HCA at all. If I did, it came up very tangentially. Uh, my, the substance of my so, discussion was so, a different matter. So when I contact, so I, I only contacted via email, and I explicitly asked for the agreement in writing in its current, like whatever the level of alignment was between the town and, what is Mr. Fromm's attorney's name? Uh, Kyle Sosby. Kyle so so Sosby. Sosby, yeah. I apologize. No worries. My, my brain is actually full on names, so cycling them in. That is frighteningly close to Kaiser Sose. <laughs> oh, oh, now I remember it. <laughs> That's remember. really yeah. funny. So, so I, I asked for the current state of the document, and basically they didn't give it to me. Which, um, and since they somewhat cited you as the reason why they weren't giving it to me, I just basically figured I'd wait and talk to you at the meeting. Yeah, probably some curses at my general direction in your head also for um, mucking with your things. So the good news is, is I tend to use. Um, I start to draw on my uh, rather voluminous uh, vocabulary, vocabulary. <laughs> in lieu of <laughs> profanity. So if I use a lot of million dollar words during this conversation, you will understand what happened. Mm -hmm. So um, I believe that Attorney Sosby has a copy. He does have a copy. So, does he have a copy? Yeah, so I, and, and you know, I, I didn't know about that interaction um, between the board and, and town council, so I can kind of explain <coughs> what version I have with me. That would be great. Thank um, you. So, you know, originally KP Law had sent me um, their their template. Um, I sent them back my redlined uh, edits, and then I had a phone call with Nicole Costanzo, um, I guess, last week, and we went through my my revisions line by line. Um, you know, and she said what what the town would agree to, what they wouldn't. Um, and then I, um, I, I sent her another red line uh, incorporating most but not all of um, what she wanted changed back or changed. Um, and, you know, and said, you know, we were agreeing to, su to some of what uh, the town wanted, but, but there were some things that were still in contention um, that were reflected in the new red line. And I sent that on Monday. Um, and so I, I hadn't heard anything since then, so I, I didn't know what had happened with it. I, I had assumed yeah, that you had received it. Yeah, and I apologize. It. I was out of town for a few days because oh, no, it's, it's family business. Right, no, and I, I'm not saying that to cast any oh, blame. Oh, no, that's um, okay. And but it just, just to, I guess, to make the point that you you might not have seen the document that I have with me. Correct. Okay. That's probably the I, I didn't realize that. But, yep. Um, yep. but I do have copies. Oh, um, good. <laughs> I was going to say that you know it's a care. <laughs> and I, I do have... Um, I do have a couple copies of the uh, that reflects the kind of the most recent changes. Um, it didn't come out great on my printer as far as the red lines. There's three copies. So th this is the this is what we had hoped would be the final document. Um, there's. to see how much can be seen in this. So you're welcome to look at these. These are um, that should reflect, I mean, I know it's not easy to see because it's in black and white, so you can't see the, the red lines. Um, but um, th that should reflect the changes between KP Law's original template and th our proposed final draft. And I'm, I apologize, I, I realize I only have two of those. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, so, here, so you the, can add this one. Right. So, so the marked up version reflects the um, basically incorporates all the discussions that you and town council have had on the uh, on this matter or most of it y yes so the 
the marked up versions on, on that really reflect, um, most importantly, they reflect changes that town council said the town was not necessarily agreeing to. Okay. Um, and, and I guess the, the point of that being that that wasn't something that the, the attorneys could resolve. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's something that the town could either agree to or not um, and seeing what it is, um, but it couldn't be resolved just between myself and, and Nicole. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we need to. Uh... Well, so fundamentally, <coughs> can let's just be straightforward about this. What, what, where are the differences right now? I think because at the last documentation I saw, we had three fundamental differences, and I think two of them we had a space that we could move into that was somewhere between where our language was. Where are we at so with, with this copy right now? Can you, can you describe which, which three you're referring to? There, there were a, a number of my, edits I somewhere. I brought my notes. There was one relative to uh, indemnification that I know that we mm -hmm. had to find some common language on. Yes. Um, there was some questions around the good neighbor policy and what the oh. expectations were relative to that. And there was one relative to um, putting a time certain on what flavor of local regulations and, and bylaws that this agreement pertained to. Yes, so I'm, I, I'd be happy those, to address those. Those. Were the three, those were the three areas that I remember that we still needed to find some common language on. Right, so it, um, if I could address first the good neighbor policy. Um, what town council said to me was that th that really shouldn't have been um, capitalized in okay. the template. Um, that, that it wasn't referring to a specific policy, okay. um, but was really referring to more um, uh, simply that, that St. Fusions was agreeing to be a, you know, desired to be a good corporate citizen and a good neighbor, right. um, to, which, which is agreeable. To not like arbitrarily act in a way that was uh, counterintuitive to what you'd expect from somebody that is living next to you. Right, right. But, but, but my understanding that there was no actual <laughs> written policy. Right, so, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's correct. We don't, we don't, I know we don't currently have anything and, and then to address the indemnification. So, um, you know, I, I would first point out that um, there's no requirement that this, that a host community agreement have an indemnification provision. Uh, other, other towns and cities do not. I know that, for instance, Northampton, which has many cannabis establishments, does not have an indemnification provision in theirs. Regardless, um, the issue that I took with KP Law's provision was that the, my position is that it was too, too broadly related to the property and the business, such that um, there wasn't a clear relationship to the business, um, businesses acts or omissions being the, the cause being the cause of a claim that the town would be on the hook for. Okay. So, so I think in in principle, Sun Fusions is agreeable to an indemnification uh, provision. And is your language that because I don't have the changes piece where you put gross negligence or misconduct? Well, and, and and before then, so arising from or relating to the company's breach of this agreement, the company's gross negligence or misconduct, or the company's failure to comply with applicable laws or regulations. In the performance of its obligations under this agreement. Okay. So, and, ba so basically, if, if we if, if you violated the intent of this agreement, or just choose to willfully act in a manner that's counterintuitive to both law and good sense, then you'd be on the hook to help us with our legal fees relative to an action against the town for failing to control y'all. Yes, I mean, my, right. My intent was that there be a a relationship between an act or omission of the company and the claim and not have it be so broad that simply... Um, if someone took offense because we had cannabis in town and, and then went after the town in spite of 57% of us saying that we wanted cannabis but, in our town, that, that's, that that's exact, not your yeah, problem. That's exactly the example I was thinking of. Someone sued the town saying that the, you know, the vote in favor of, of the legalization 
um, state measure was was fraudulent or something. That I, I think the way KP law drafted the original provision, that could put Sunfusions on the hook for that lawsuit, and I th that seemed to me to be um, overly broad. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's, that's I, I think that's reasonable. I mean, I, and I don't see any particular issue with the verbiage as mm -hmm. it stands. It at least basically, you know, it, it's a. I hate to put it this way, the indemnification clause is basically the, the teeth of the good neighbor policy. It's the follow the agreement and don't be that person or entity and you won't have to worry mm -hmm. about helping us defend ourselves from mm -hmm. the populace or from the fact that you haven't conducted yourself in a <laughs> manner that's appropriate. So, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, okay. Two so, <laughs> three. Yes, so the... Um, as, as you referred to the the time certain in regards to the uh, the bylaws and regulations um, that would be deemed applicable to this agreement. So I did put in language in a few places, which I will point out, um, basically stating that that the understanding of the parties for this agreement was that the bylaws and the regulations that it's referring to. Um, are those that uh, were in effect as of February 1st, 2024. And I, I chose that date because that was the date that um, the, the board agreed to enter into these negotiations. I mean, I, if, if you want to change that, I, I think that, that could be done. That sounds like a very reasonable date. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's when we started actively right. working it, fundamentally. Right, and, and so the, the intent behind um, putting this date into the provisions that refer to the regulations and the bylaws was so that um, essentially everyone, it, there would be a clear understanding of what sort of rules were in effect for this agreement um, and, and what that, you know, what rules Sunfusions would be, um, would be obliged to, um, to follow comply and to with, uphold. To comply, to comply with. with, yes. Um, and so that, that, for instance, sort of the, the rug couldn't be pulled out from under the business after significant, you know, investment had been made and, and the business was, was up and running and then um, Especially where two thirds of our town meeting agreed that we have a perfectly reasonable <coughs> marijuana zoning bylaw that is perfect because no one's happy with it, right? It, right. It was the ultimate compromise. Nobody actually likes the damn thing, but so that means it must be actually. Yeah, exactly. Doing what it's actually doing. Right? So, so um, and so I'd be glad to point out where those um, those dates are. Okay. Um, That'd be great. So. Number seven. Yes, there's uh, section number seven on page five, titled Local Permitting. Um, yep, okay. Right, and so, so I, obviously the company will have to obtain a, a special permit from the, um, the planning board um, and whatever other local approvals may be required. Uh, section uh, I guess it's 11k on page 9 entitled waste and wastewater controls state and federal regulations, but if those change, you know that we have no control over that, it, nor do you, and everyone just needs to comply with it. No, exactly, and this, the, the, so the there, was no, there was no intent to sort of freeze state or federal law to the extent it applies to the business. Um, uh, the next, the following section, L, odor control technology, and the date is on the following page, page 10. Uh, 
and and, and I actually mm -hmm. like yes. where and I, and I like the where we landed actually relative to the odor as well overall. I think that I think that's a decent. Oh yes, and so um, I feel like I should address something that a change that was made in there just so that it's not because I'm, I'm not sure exactly what you what you saw and what, what you I didn't. Saw, what I didn't. Um, so the way the, the original template read, I had concerns about the sort of um, there was a proscriptive there was a proscriptive nature relative to the technology to be used. I know. Well, there was that, but it, but more my concern was more so in the unfettered discretion it gave the the town to impose um, any mitigation measures it, it it chose to do so upon the company without any. Um, it put no basis in science or law or regulation or um, due process. Um, and I found that a little bit concerning. Because um, what if, you know, if, if it's an easy fix and it fixes a, a valid problem, I'm sure that Sun Fusions would be glad to do it. But what if, you know, what if it was a, a $5 million um, solution and the town was to say, well, you have to do it or you shut down, right? Um, that could be problematic. So, so, what I, so the way I changed it was to say that um, there would have to be a public hearing and that there would have to be a, um, a recommendation of an independent expert yeah. prior to the town mandating such a, a requirement. Yeah. So, and I do have a question though, and, and I know we don't have a, a broad list of definitions at the beginning of this document, which is always a challenge, right? So, but uh, I, I think, because I, I don't know if you all raised independent expert first or if, if I made that recommendation as well to KP. Um, but uh, one, of, one of the things I was interested in seeing was that the independent expert was, was defining how that independent expert would be like, selected between mm. the two parties, fundamentally, because that can get, is it your expert, is it your right. expert? <laughs> that's, 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 the only, that's the only thing, I, I agree, independent expert, it, in my perfect world, we would have a little bit of verbiage wrapped around the, the independent expert. So, you know, it, it can be selected by one party, but it, it, it requires the agreement of both parties for the selection of the independent expert. Can we just can we but, come up with some fairly generic language to that effect? Right. I mean, that I mean that seems very very reasonable. I mean, if if um, you know, I mean, I guess there's the. I, I don't know how you know, know agreement, you agreements can go. You know, if you need an expert witness that has certain credentials, and I don't know how you do that for this. Yeah, I don't know how you, I don't know how you do that for this, but I, mm. I think that. I mean, it, it's going to depend on what. The, it, an expert to be agreed by the parties, such agreement not to be unreasonably withheld. Yes, something like that would be fine. I think that like, I think that verbiage is is fine. But you understand where I'm going yeah. with that. I mean, it's perfectly reasonable. If you all agree to the changes in the current format that it is in this particular, you can have the option to, to vote to approve it as discussed as amended right. and authorize the signature without having to come back, back to another meeting. That's what I was going to recommend, actually. So, because um, so long as it's simple and straightforward. Right. And, clearly defined changes, I think mm -hmm. we can do that, so. Yeah. I mean, I've got a, a couple thoughts here. Um, for, the, for the odor control, the, um, the permit, or the HEA, from what I read, envisions outdoor cultivation, correct? No. Or both, did I miss that? Both well, greenhouse. Well, so it's, greenhouse. it's, a, it's, not, it's, it's, not it's an outdoor license as entitled by the CCC, mm -hmm. but the, um, that has to do with the use of artificial lights, how the CCC deems it. But Sun Fusion's plans are that they will be enclosed in greenhouses. Okay. But they, but they won't be using artificial lights for the majority of the growing, so therefore the CCC is going to deem it outdoor. Okay. So it's going to be... It'll so be enclosed. It will be enclosed in greenhouses without artificial light, um, is what I heard oh, you say. Or minimal. 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 Okay. Okay. That's, uh, and that's... I, I, I just want to understand what's being... Negotiate. But for, for the purposes then, of odor mitigation, it will it will be enclosed in a greenhouse. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. All right. So that that brings odor With control there now. And all the other I know. And now and now we see water, but this is this is in 
this is off of Molasses Hill Road, uh, at the north end of Molasses Hill Road, and there is no town water there. Correct. They're so gonna be, they're going to be the operating off of well. Mm -hmm. um, and that was actually one of the areas where we, we had to go back and forth some because mm -hmm. the original text provided by KP included hand watering, and, and the intent was to actually um, uh, in, in speaking with with them, the intent is to use a drip system. Mm -hmm. A drip system is probably one of the most water efficient means mm -hmm. to do any type of agriculture. So the way we put it in here was to that if any watering method was to be used, um, and basically it, that the because right they don't here. want to waste water. Water consumption <laughs> techniques shall include drip irrigation and a commitment not to engage in water intensive cultivation methods. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I asked for that is because I'm aware of residents south of the river whose wells go very, very dry during dry seasons. Mm -hmm. um, even uh, um, uh, Nanatampa had to sink some additional wells a couple years back because they were starting mm -hmm. to run dry. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they're right next to the river. And they're right next to the river, right? They're probably so pretty full now. <laughs> they're probably pretty full now, but, mm -hmm. but you know, it's a cyclic thing. And mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, I, and I, I, you know, and I just know that there's people that struggle with that. So that was one of the things I asked. And drip irrigation, it's in here explicitly. It makes mm -hmm. sense both from their perspective and from the town's perspective because it's, it's, it's water conscious. And then if something should change and that wasn't the method being employed, then they'd have to basically communicate it to us and make sure that doesn't put the neighbors in a, in a bad way. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yeah that, that's my, yeah, that's, I just want to make sure that we weren't putting someone in there who was going to suck up a whole bunch of water and right. use it. I mean, it's like, granted, I expect most of the water they use is either going to be absorbed by the plants and eventually go back or yeah, I mean, it's going to go back into the ground. So. Right. Exactly. And I don't, I don't know what the, I don't know what the um, and water. You're talk, and you're talking a drip system in a closed building like a greenhouse, which is going to keep high humidity anyway, which is so going to lower your water, water consumption, you know, and yeah. it's, it's got and its then, own water cycle there. And, and what, what is the, uh, what is the water requirement of the uh, Envision manufacturing operation? And, and, and actually, Kelly, before I get too far into the weeds, is this, is this water is you something that? Agriculture. This is only about the agricultural okay. agreement. This okay. has nothing to do about the. Okay. Okay. So the manufacturing and the retail are not part of today's discussion. No. Got it. All right. That makes. We are only talking about the agricultural agreement. Okay. I, 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 while we're on the topic, I, I, I did take the liberty of drafting basically the an identical version of the HCA for the manufacturing license. Um, I, I realized that that probably wasn't contemplated by the the board for tonight, but just in case that you felt that this covered it, I, I do have that document with me. I have copies of it. Okay. Okay. Well, let's let's finish yeah, this the off, and then we the can use this. The only thing that's on the agenda that we can speak to, we could take your copy and review right. it and, and we read out it at the next meeting, but we can't vote on it tonight. So. Yeah. And then the other thing is, and I don't. The the freezing of regulation, so. That may that basically that means that if the t that means that the town any changes to the bylaws or town regulations that happen, if I do I understand correctly that they would be in, immunized from them or indemnified or I don't know what the right term is, but they would be grandfathered under so that the changes don't well, affect them. I don't know that it's so much that it doesn't affect them, but they don't have a binding agreement with us to follow them if they would be a radical. They wouldn't be in violation of the HCA. They wouldn't be in violation of this mm -hmm. if they chose not to follow a future regulation that's strictly a municipal regulation. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I actually looked through other towns, HCAs, and what actually I haven't found any with a date. Usually it references the um, bylaw versions and stuff like that. Yeah. So, I mean, which is effectively doing the same thing. Which is effectively time. doing the same thing, right? Yeah. So, I mean, if we wanted to change the date certain to whatever our current date is of our town bylaws, then mm -hmm. that would, you know, that would fall into the same category. Mm -hmm. I think the reason why they're using a date certain is because a lot of, uh, unlike towns that are mature enough to have revision controlled regulations, I doubt that we have, you know, I, I doubt we have a full set of um, 
if we had any town specific conservation commission um, rules or regulations, I doubt that we have one that shows exactly what date it was affected mm -hmm. fundamentally. Mm -hmm. So this using a date certain for the state of the regulations basically says it doesn't matter whether it's the bylaws we voted in last year or mm -hmm. something that 20 years ago became the standard practice for, you know, that's what's there. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Because what I'm, what I'm trying to wrap. And, and, so, and, and so here's the thing, right? Mm -hmm. If we had, y'all were ready to just sign a waiver six weeks ago. <laughs> this is true. With none of the controls that are in this document. So. I, I wasn't ready to sign a waiver. Y'all okay. sounded like you were ready to sign a waiver. <laughs> uh, okay, so, well then, then I didn't clearly convey my. Your feelings at the time. Yes. Okay, so. My feeling is that this basically puts a lot of left-right limits in place about mm -hmm. what the expectations are between the two entities, okay? But it provides a framework of what is everyone agreeing to so that it's not a moving target, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, Because yeah, no. moving targets are awfully hard to hit. You can hit them, I'm fairly mm -hmm. skilled at it, but, right. you know. I'm just I'm just trying to wrap my head around this because I know I, I specifically I th I think of the the board of health and I know they are working on regulations, and so it's just and since those are a known issue, it's like are we signing an agreement that effectively precludes their authority? Yes, yeah. you are. Yes and no, right? So you know it's yes and no, mm -hmm. and the reason why I say yes and no is that there's a lot of um, there is a lot of challenge relative to local control for Board of Health, right? But what we're saying is our intent as the executive board of this town is that this agreement is in accordance with the regulations today. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, we are, one, we're a weak board, right? And number two, Board of Health is kind of its own beast in the state of Massachusetts. It's just like the board of edu or the school board mm -hmm. is its own beast mm -hmm. in the state of Massachusetts. Okay, yeah, it's co-equal with this, its own domain. This agreement is between us and Sun Fusions. They go rogue on us. The board of health goes rogue on the executive uh, board's intent, which is. We have our regulations, we have our bylaws. The town collectively has agreed on what we have in place today relative to our rules and our bylaws, right? Quite frankly, <laughs> some of the regulations that the Board of Health was working on was such that their meeting got shut down, had to get moved over to another space and turned mm -hmm. into quite the goat rodeo from what I understand relative to that. There okay. was some um, vigorous debate at that, okay. a vigorous discussion. So, goat rodeo. <laughs> okay, so, I can't negotiate something or the behavior of a board that we have no purview over and functionally no mechanisms about, but what we can talk about is what our intent is as the town of Brookfield, as the town of Brookfield's executive board, and what we're planning on having as a relationship and alignment with this entity that wants to be partners with us and actually be a good business partner. I will tell you when I've asked people about some of the regulations, some of the activities of the Board of Health, I get an earful mm -hmm. from people like farmers, like regular farmers, right? People that, like, all they want to do is sell a little something at the farmer's market and they're having to pay, you know, $500 oh. a year for the agent to come in and, and, and or no, $350 a year to test their water, right? Even though what they sell is baked goods at the farmer's market, okay? What does the, what's in the water matter for baked goods so long as you're following proper practices, you're never, your water's never gonna touch your product unless it's going in for 350 for 45 minutes, okay? 
So we already have a challenge in this town, right? That sometimes we're, we're, we're focusing on stuff that makes it really, 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 really hard to do business. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is our opportunity to say that us as a board of selectmen, we're not gonna let you off the hook. There's a lot of left, right limits in here based on what we have in place today, which is considered sufficient. We've got state law, right? But a lot of state law around cannabis. We've got my, like I said, everybody's least favorite marijuana bylaw because nobody likes it, right? We've got all of the licensing requirements, all of the permitting requirements, all of the stuff that people have to go through in order to get cannabis facilities established. Let's at least show that our intent is that the, the business conditions that they're operating under today is what this executive board considers what the standard should be that the enterprise is held to. If Dave wants to put me up on a sign because he says I'm in cahoots with the cannabis people, he can, he can swap your name out tonight <laughs> when he moves out of here. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, but to me it makes sense because what we're negotiating is based off of the state of the business today, state mm -hmm. of the laws today. And, and, and I, understand, I understand that we, to a large extent, have to say, it's like, okay, this is what we have now. Yeah. And then my, the challenge I'm having is that, I mean, I, I, I heard Mr. Fromm from the side saying that, this, that he, in his opinion, he felt that this agreement would isolate him from changes to um, bylaws, future, ch future bylaw changes. But all pre-existing things are isolated. Right. It's called grandfathering, that's the old terminology. Mm -hmm. Pre-existing non-conforming is a protection. Yeah. And that's it's a very works. standard one. In my own personal opinion is the CCC the has enough oversight. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so much oversight. So, so much of this. And, and, and if, I, if I can just add on, and, um, and, and Beth, I think you, you made this point, but um, you know, the intent is not to, um, you know, eviscerate the Board of Health, but rather to make it so that, for instance, the Board of Health could not effectively nullify an agreement that the select board entered into and wished to be effective. Um, and, and I think that with, without this provision, it would be possible for the Board of Health to enact regulation that essentially they, terminated actually, this. They could actually this enact regulation HCA. that functionally eviscerates both our town meeting and um, the vote that people took at the polls to say that they think cannabis should be legal in the state of Massachusetts. But then they'll have us to deal with, and you won't. Because if you put a date in, then I can't be said to be in violation of my HCA, and KP doesn't need to take anyone else's Mm -hmm. Whereas if I agree to any silly thing that comes along the pike two months from now, two years from now, not only have I invested a lot of money in something mm -hmm. that's now going to be disrupted, but I can fairly be said to be in violation of my HCA because I would be agreeing to things unknown in the future. That's mm -hmm. foolish. No one would do that. This is a contract, not a license. Okay. So, so should I be understanding this that, that for the – that – Conformance to the requirements of the HCA are predicated on conformance to the bylaws as they are today. Absolutely. If bylaws change, then non-conforming then if, non if you were use. then the if the bylaws change and you were not conforming to them, that would not constitute a violation of the HCA. That might be its own issue with not violating it's like other people might be upset, but in the context of the HCA, you'd be good in the HCA because you are conforming to what was what the HCA envisioned. Basically, can I put it this way? If you go decide ahead. to ban cannabis two years from now, I'll simply find a new place to go when my agreement mm -hmm. runs out with you. No, I, I understand. But you I won't be able to shut me down. You can prevent others from coming. Mm -hmm. I'm grandfathered because we have a contract. Because the the eight, it's like if that if that changes the and that will not void the HCA. And, 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 and I'm good with that. My thought is it's like I want I, – I agree that the HCA is there. It's just I don't want 
an executive action of the select board to um, to potentially have the it's like I want to be cognizant of the other elected boards in town they have their own area and I want to make sure that we're not going in there and so so Kelly they've is had a year plus to enact whatever regulations that they intended to relative to this topic. Mm -hmm. And I don't want them coming at us. I'd rather them go to the CCC and start a complaint there. Right, exactly. <laughs> so if, if we have a board in town that hasn't enacted whatever they want to enact relative to marijuana, where it's been legal in the state now for what? For recreational use for like, what, four years? Yeah, and, we've had, and, and, yeah. and, and we've had various flavors of bylaw come through over the same amount of time. There's not a regulation in place today. Shame on them. Mm -hmm. And if you look right. at, I mean, not to go off topic, but if you look at the fines that have been levied against cultivators, none of them have to do with any of this. It's more ownership issues, things like that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I because Brad does it so much, so much better <laughs> than, the, than the two of us. <laughs> so. All right. I mean, as as long as the locking in of the bylaws is scoped to conformance uh, uh, interpretation of the HCA, then I'm good because we own the HCA and I'm willing to say if the rules change, I'm not going to say you're violating the HCA because a rule changed after we agreed it. I'm willing as in the context purely of the HCA to say, yep, we're entering into this in the context of the rules we have now, we're not gonna, we're not gonna change them. It's like, exactly. uh, if, if state law changes, well, life happens. That will affect my Think. license. Mm -hmm. I don't have a contract with the state. This is just a contract that the business would work for. Mm -hmm. so, so I'll make a I'm motion good. to, uh, can, are you accepting motions? Uh, I am always, I'm always accepting motions. Okay, I'll make a motion that we accept it with the discussed modification inclusive of the definition of, of um, uh, independent expert. expert. Mm -hmm. Second. All right. I'm good. Any further discussion? Okay. All right. Well then, all in favor of um, best motion to um, to agree in principle to the um, oh, HC. No, it's not in principle. You're, uh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So, all so in favor of Beth's motion to approve the HCA with the discussed changes. Yep. Did you get that right? With the discussed changes. With the discussed changes, um, uh, uh, to be, uh, it's like, please say aye. 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 Um, for just procedurally, uh, for, the, for, the, for that one change um, regarding the agreement of the experts, how would you like that to be made? Did, I can, you, ha did you have, did, did you Dave have Dave used beautiful language. language. Did we write down his language? Because I'll write it We have it on video. <laughs> this is the no. common oh, language yeah. in a contract. It's very, very common. Yes, no, I have. Just I, the way he said it. I have his language, but I guess what I'm asking is, uh, would you like me to send you, um, you know, uh, e email you a document that has that language added? Do you want to do it yourself? I just want to know if, if you want me to do something. What, it um, makes sense that since you're present, you know what all the changes are, that it would come from your office. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. And then we'll, since we voted it here, we'll just roll by because it could be your signatures. Yes, you just, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Email What's the final document? For the minutes, please. Uh, the um, changes. I'm sorry, can you say that? Email the, email the change to her specifically yes. for so the language. Right. Thank you. Yep. All right, I think that takes care of the HCA. If, if, I, can, oh. if I can just give you copies of the the proposed manufacturing HCA, which is the same, but for the description of the license and everywhere, basically everywhere it said cultivation, I substituted the word manufacturing. And I think I, re I, think I removed the provision on um, 
uh, use of pesticides. Mm -hmm. But um, if that yeah. document is based on what you've given to us, it almost thinks that my, my thinking is that it may make sense to wait for the fi wait for the final signable version of the uh, cultivation HCA, and then go through and replace cultivation with manufacturing, make any make the couple manufacturing related uh, changes, and then use that as the basis for discussion. And we can treat this as preliminary. Yeah, that, that's, no, okay. I, I understand that you're not voting on this tonight. Yeah. The, the top two documents, so, I'm sorry, the top two documents are um, red line showing the changes between the cultivation and the manufacturing HCA. Okay. And then the bottom three documents, sorry, I don't have, I apologize, I don't have three of the red lines, but um, mm -hmm. the bottom three are the a clean version of the proposed manufacturing. Okay. Right. You guys want the red lines? Sure. Okay. And another red line. No, 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 they, they yeah, no, they, they signed the other. So we we do just have a procedural question. When when will the when would we actually get a, a signed copy of the cultivation HCA? If you have it to Karen, today's Thursday night. Can everybody roll by Monday to sign? Mm -hmm. So probably Monday by well, I'll be out of town. Yeah. Can we make I work now? out of town on Mondays. So you could probably have by like Tuesday. I can, I mean, I, I can, I have my computer with me. I could make the changes and email them right now. And then when, as yeah. soon as you're and able actually, to sign it. If you can do that right now. now, we'll print it out. Okay, I'll do that. So, yeah. so that's easier run? than trying to, that's easier than trying to catch us uh, outside mm -hmm. here. Yeah. And the, this con, we would want to run that by a town council. It's a little late, we already voted to sign it. Okay. But we still, but we still have a chance. He's going to email. So we're done with agenda item number one, I believe? I believe so. All right, agenda item number two, replacement security camera server. Ready? Nope. Oh, no, we did, we did three. We, did yeah, we, we jumped around. We did a lot of the administrative yeah. stuff waiting yeah, for I you. I saw that. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, sorry about that, but thank you for accommodating me. No worries. Do we want to do Mr. Taff now? <laughs> <laughs> or Mr. Kelleher? Mr. Kelleher has got Okay. Oh, yeah, we do. We do. We yeah, still I'm have. going to do the security thing. Um, I didn't know if you were still going out of order. I was gonna try to get people out of here. Yeah, that's <laughs> all right. Good. Yeah, good point. All right, so, all right, so I will. Uh, so instead of number two, we will jump to uh, agenda item number six: highway department staffing and personnel. So, Gary, can you come and join us for this conversation, since you are our interim superintendent. I think the expectation was we were going to pass. Why don't we talk about well, number six and then we can go to number and seven? That, that'll give context for seven. So. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, number six. Uh, I know it's, it's listed as strictly discussion. Yeah. yeah, I, 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 sep I, I listed them separately to allow us to have a sort of broad ranging discussion, and that would inform uh, the specific point of num agenda item number seven. Okay, but I, as I got, I like to keep those separate just to. Okay, well the only the only um, up to date, if you will, discussion we could have about this is we currently know what the staffing levels are at the highway department. Mm -hmm. So right now we have one vacancy for a superintendent and one vacancy for an equipment operator. Um, so my so my suggestion is we unless there's a discussion about a restructure, that we make an attempt to fill those holes uh, mm -hmm. as soon as possible. 
So that's my, um, really my only comments about both positions. I don't know who, <coughs> excuse me, who has applied for either. Um, I know it's been on, on the board, uh, the, board, the board's mind certainly, certainly on Kelly's mind. Um, mm -hmm. I, I feel that the department is, is moving smoothly, but there's a lot more we could accomplish if we had a full staff. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I think the, the open operator position is technically what an operator two, which is the foreman. That's correct. So I think that's where it gets confusing, right? So I think what needs to happen would be if we're gonna add anybody to staff, what we need to do first is to hire the foreman, determine whether that hire is gonna be internal or external, it's gonna be promotion of, so I think both of our existing operators have applied for the foreman position, mm -hmm. right? So it would be a case of determining if one of them needs to get designated as foreman and then we would have to backfill post for the operator level one. And if we chose to fill that with a part-time versus a full-time person, then that would be at the superintendent's discretion, right? With the understanding that, you know, if the person couldn't work the full number of hours, you're only gonna get what you get. Mm -hmm. So have we, do we still have the foreman position posted? Advertise. The foreman position is, no, we didn't advertise it because remember Tom rescinded it, wasn't it? So that we kept, we kept, no, we kept it, we kept it advertised. It has been advertised. Oh, of course. It has it's been, been advertised. advertised. Four times in uh, seven papers twice and in five papers twice, and each one of it had a two week run. Plus it was running on, I do not advertise break this minute, that's okay. what I'm trying to cover. Okay. But, but it's, it's been online. advertised sufficiently that we could fill the position. Yes, and okay. also yes. it's been online. And how, many, and how many applicants do we have? Only the two. So not a single one. person applied other than the, the two current operators? Oh, for the, the, the uh, foreman. foreman. For the foreman. No, we only have the two, the two original ones that, that, um, that applied. Wow. <laughs> There's a lot of towns that haven't posted out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Okay. So then the question comes down to, as superintendent, right? Does the superintendent want to fill that position at, as a as an operator too, or as just have three level one operators and the superintendent's the only head honcho on there? You're looking at me, you're saying, does the superintendent want to do something? And I feel like you're looking at me. Well, through you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the superintendent, um, as you have him now, is certainly not pushing himself out the door. Right. I'm um, very happy with the interactions that we've had, um, um, of the observations that I've made. Um, as the season progresses, and we hopefully winter will be over after this weekend, um, and I've met with many residents, I've seen many problems, I've seen things that we have to do, uh, I'm happy to do that. Um, is it right for the town? I guess that's my question. If you have, uh, you um, advertise for a working superintendent, I think we've discussed that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So with a working superintendent, um, and uh, three full-time full staffers, as yeah. well as the administrative assistant, um, for the onset, for now, that is fine. Um, but that's, I'm, I'm a part-timer, and that's all I can be. It's not that right. I don't want to work full-time, but that's right. all I can be. Right. So, well, and because here's the problem. What we posted was the foreman position. Right. So the only thing we can fill right now would be the foreman position. And I think part of the discussion today is would be if we need, if we want to fill the third slot with a, with an operator at level one, right? One, I think, I, I'm gonna tell you first off, it, at the business where I work, if we have internal applicants, at a minimum, we should be interviewing them, mm -hmm. okay? And if they're, and, and if, and if for whatever reason, they aren't gonna get that position, we would owe them some explanation and a developmental conversation about why they will or won't get the position, okay? And then the next step would be to post for an operator, right? So either we fill the foreman position with one of the two gentlemen that's applied for it, 
when we do what we did with the superintendent, which is interviewed a couple people and said, nope, not doing either one. Right? Mm -hmm. So, and if the answer after interviewing our operators is that no, neither one of them is ready for level two, right? Then we could empower the highway superintendent to repost that position as a level one and take on whatever applicant, appropriate applicants that he has to fill that position as a non, as a non foreman position. But those are our choices. Either we, either we, inter we, we interview the, the two gentlemen that have applied, Eric and Mike, determine if one of them ought to be a foreman. And in that situation, you're really evaluating them against the foreman job description and if they're ready to take it on, okay? And then post their position when it's vacated by them mm -hmm. becoming foreman, in which case you've already got a live applicant for that role, right? And then we just would have to have it posted for the two weeks and do whatever is the appropriate thing relative to get resumes and interviews and whatnot, okay? And then fill that slot as a backfill or we determine we're not going to refill the foreman position that was functionally created because we had somebody who was a very long-term person that, you know, because we don't do true, what is it, um, grade? Step and grade? Since we don't do step and grade here, mm -hmm. it was just asinine, and the only way to, to do right by them was to create the foreman position. The only reason why that exists, only reason why that exists, yeah, it wasn't out of necessity. It was not out of necessity. It was to do the right thing by a long-term employee. So, in which case, it, if, if we said, hey, neither one of these people was, is truly foreman material, now granted, I'm sure either one of them or both of them will be angry if that happens, and that creates its own mm -hmm. host of challenges. But those are our choices at this point. Mm -hmm. And as we move forward on that, the question becomes, we, we also need to pay attention and, uh, and move forward the, uh, the search for a, uh, yeah. a permanent superintendent. There was one resume that came through for permanent superintendent mm -hmm. that I saw come through my email. Yeah, thank you. Oh, and, all right, and Kelly, for Thomas. our ability to, our, under what structure can we review and screen applicants. Does, it, does the, if that's done by the board, does it have to be an open meeting? Because you are the hiring authority, the law specifically, with specificity, excludes you from being a review team for um, that is that is allowed in executive session for that purpose. Okay. So the screening you know, the committee. Uh, yes, yeah, screening committee is what I is the terminology I was looking right. for. But we can so, vote one of our members. You can do one member to do screening. Um, another option is that you all look at the resumes and our applications and you bring forward your preferred choice to a meeting and then you review that choice without any communication obviously between you. You bring your preferred choices forward if you agree on one or two or all of the preferred choices, right? You each bring one or two. Then you know who you're going to interview. Right. Well, and right now where you said the interview, and or you can assign one of you to do that, and then that person bring forward the suggested. Right. And right now we're not inundated with resumes, but we have one. Mm -hmm. I'll volunteer to do. And Gary, it's not because we're not happy with you. Don't get get me wrong. Well, according to you, you, I think that you're you're kind of concerned, or maybe convinced that I've turned into a flaming pile of doo doo. <laughs> oh Lord, no. You said that. I heard you say. Lord, no. Brad said steaming, if, not trust me. Oh, steam. So, so I'm going to share with you a secret. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to share with you a secret that unfortunately our last highway superintendent didn't figure out. If I thought you were a flaming pile of doo doo, I would be down at that highway barn probably twice a week. Well, I would like to see you down there twice a week, but not, not for that regard. I can do that, but then people will think I'm trying to fire you. <laughs> I'm not trying to fire her. I know I've been down there a few times. <laughs> Listen, I'm just, I'm just interested, full disclosure, I am very, and it's really funny, my team at work, they, they say that I'm, I'm not the easiest person to work for or with, but I am incredibly consistent, okay? 
So one consistent thing is that if I thought you were a flaming pile of doo-doo, you steaming. would know. Steaming. 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 <laughs> steaming. That's the step below flaming. I'm actually kind of um, kind of excited about what I'm seeing as far as getting projects done. Um, I, I've uh, met with, obviously, with uh, Lindsay and Kathy yeah. to reopen um, the grant for um, for Gay Road. Okay. <laughs> Even though the initial proposal was not for the, I guess, I'm, I'm probably getting off topic, aren't I? Yes, yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah, sorry. So I apologize. Yeah, so. I'm steaming. <laughs> <laughs> and it's steam. It's getting to the it's, it's but, steam. But quite, quite honestly and frankly, uh, what I've seen with the, with the crew, and I, I, I know that two people applied, I have not seen uh, resumes or applications. Okay. Um, based on my... Well, um, I did. I sent the second one. Well, the only two that really applied other than two. We don't talk about well, no, I'm not going to say okay. I was going to say <laughs> the one that he, that he brought in. That oh, no, 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 he's talking about the foreman. He's talking about the foreman. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've interacted. I've observed. I've worked with um, all of the above with the gentleman that did, um, did apply. And I'm, I'm pleased to understand that I'm not basing any decisions historically because I wasn't here for what happened in the past. Yeah. I wasn't here. I'm just telling you what I've seen and, and how we interact and the knowledge that both of them have regarding the function of yep. the highway department. Yep. Um, but it, it's hard for me knowing some of the historic facts, um, but I would still, I would have a recommendation for one of those gentlemen to take that position. Okay. I've seen, I've seen a change, and I know that's hard for everybody. I, I work with that every day. Um, so. I've seen a change based on what I've heard. I know that may be hard for, for people to comprehend, but that's just I'm, uh, what I've heard I haven't seen. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Um, I'm just, just, just stating the facts. I know that's not, so, so that's not the purpose so of this, this it, discussion. I, well, I get it. But. Well, it is somewhat the purpose of the discussion because I mean, the purpose <coughs> of the discussion is staffing and personnel discussion, right? Which is like, what's the plan, right? <laughs> and And... And Kelly, if I remember correctly, you had you had sent us a structure in an email, and this is the one that I'm thinking of, where the structure is a foreman, and basically two operators and the superintendent. And, yeah, and the, and the admin. And the admin. Um, yes, that is that is the current structure. Right. You as the executive board can change that. Yeah, we, we can change it, but current structure is, and it sounds like it, it sounds like you feel that 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 it's at least worth. Retaining that structure, and that you you have you have somebody you would recommend for foreman. Out of those that I've heard, I'd apply. Yes. Okay. I don't know how many. Actually, I don't know how many times it's been posted. Uh, I know we don't have any externals, nor do we have any other internals. Okay. So, so I don't know honestly. So I mean, if, if we would be wasting our time to repost if we don't have. Oh, I think. Out. Well, I think I, I think if we have posted that many times, we don't have any other applicants and. I think the question is, and I think one of the reasons why we held off was originally we were looking to try to bring in a permanent, with no disrespect, a permanent highway super, let, let him or her make the decision about what the structure would be. That, uh, right. And that's uh, but, and I had but, that conversation but, but with right now, But right now, right now, your interim is fairly long term. Yeah. <laughs> right? Well, his interim in other towns is also long term. <laughs> <Right. laughs> and uh, and so, so, you know, I, I'm thinking that you know, do we, I mean, my thought is, is if that's where Gary stands today, we empower him to make a hire for the foreman position and then advertise the backfill for the operator, even though you've already got an applicant, do we have to leave it posted two weeks to be compliant? What well, operator if you do the foreman? There is no. Oh, for yeah, because oh, it's 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 a vacated then it vacates the position, and then you have to post the position. The food. It's, it's, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but we can't just hire tomorrow. Sugar deficiency. We, yeah. We can't. We can't just hire tomorrow. Because right. We have to post. Yeah. I, but yeah. I get it. So now you're 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 picking oh. up what I'm laying. I'm I'm on board. Yes. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So my recommendation would be that we vote tonight to. Request that the highway superintendent make a d determination regarding the hiring of a foreman, and that in the event in the event that it is filled internally, that we authorize him 
to add post and advertise appropriately for a backfill of the operator selected performance. Mm -hmm. So are you authorizing him to actually hire the foreman or advise as to whether or not it should be the foreman? I didn't understand. Historically speaking, I, I know what the history is. I understand that the reason that the foreman was made, I'm just trying to no, clarify. No, what I was saying is historically speaking, I think we've let the highway super pretty much hire their team. Okay. I don't All think right. we. I, I just wasn't clear if you were saying it. Advise us on what the makeup should be, or if you're saying if you feel you well, I think the reality is too. If another form, if we end up hiring another superintendent, and he doesn't like the guys that are working with him, and they don't get along. He, he can work. effectively he, get rid of them. He, he can get rid of exactly. <laughs> well, that's what I'm thinking. That, that's basically where I'm at. Yeah. Is, is let Gary make the choices that he feels are appropriate for his team. Yeah. Right. And if somebody comes in and doesn't agree with those choices. We sort it out then. Yeah. Well, I can also, Beth, to your comment initially, um, I would have certainly no objection to you, to, to you, the board, interviewing both candidates. Okay. I would have no objection to that whatsoever. Yeah. I mean, this is a this is a, a joint effort to me. Yep. It's just um, you know, this is a, I, I want what's right for the town of Brookfield. Yeah. That's all. So. So was there a motion? So the motion was to I my motion was actually to let let Gary. Um, Select his his pick, zero or whomever, for foreman, and if he picks a foreman, to authorize him to go ahead and post for the backfill without coming back to us. Mm -hmm. And if he chooses not to pick a foreman, to communicate to both us and the individuals interviewed as to why they weren't selected for the operator two position, and then authorize him again to post the for the third position as an operator one. Mm -hmm. So his choice, basically he's empowered to fill the three slots however he chooses to fill them, either by promoting one and advertising. Either way he needs to advertise for an operator because either he's going to yeah. fill the foreman internally or he's going to have three level one operators. Right. So I'd like to vote to empower Gary to go ahead and structure his three head count however he chooses to, to do it, so long as he fills it in a legal way that's compliant with all of our bylaws and state regulations. And he has the budget. There's no budget yeah, question. Yeah, there's no budget question. Yeah, the, the, the position's already budgeted. Right, right. Yep. If I may, on to the chair, would that empowerment, could that empowerment include interviews? Yeah. By me, yeah. based on what I see in writing? Yeah, that's, that's, that would, yeah, the please. way I just made that motion is basically okay. you go fill your positions in whatever structure you need okay. see fit. It's basically what I just said. Okay. If you want a shorter version of that. In a legal and appropriate manner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. Uh, no, that we, yeah, that we. we have a second. That, Sorry. That, okay. <laughs> right, thank you, man. So for, for discussion, so we're right now the, the motion, the effect of the motion will be to empower Gary to uh, conduct interviews. And I'm not rewording the motion. I'm making sure I understand it correctly. Okay is that uh, to, uh, to conduct interviews and to select the candidate uh, for the foreman that he wants. Um, and then upon selection of a candidate, he's then authorized to backfill the a, an open operator one position. And uh, he is also authorized that should he decide that neither candidate is, is a good fit for the position, yep. that uh, then he is authorized to, um, to hire a third operator one to uh, to bring the head count up yep. to scratch. Yep. You comfortable with that? Yes. All right. Then I'm good. All right. Any further discussion? All right. Seeing as there's none, all in favor of Beth's motion to move this forward, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Right. For, um, now for the suit for the superintendent. We have one applicant. Yep. All right. I don't. Uh, are we? What's there that? Were there were two, but one one took a job somewhere else. Okay. So one so one has taken that. One has gone elsewhere. Yes. Okay. All right. So we, we have one we have one active candidate. Okay. Okay. All right. Then. It would have been Monday or Tuesday. So it was the one that I saw, the one that's still. Available? Yes. Okay. Yes. 
then what I would propose is that, the, and Kelly, please check me for legality and appropriateness, is that the, board, the members of the board evaluate that resume individually and at our next meeting, we will, um, we will decide whether we want to bring them in for an interview or not. I'd like permission to phone screen. You want me to, you want to move that board and do you I'll want to I'll make a motion that I get to phone screen the applicant. Brad on. Second? Second. All right. Um, Brad, do you understand what she's saying? Yeah. If I phone screen, because you just look. Well, I was caught off guard. <laughs> Mm -hmm. so, so you want to move this I, forward? I don't want to. I don't want to go rogue. Yeah. So I'm yeah. asking for permission to call the person and phone a screen them. Mm -hmm. I, that will move things forward faster. And two thumbs up with that. Okay. All in favor of Beth phone screening the uh, the current applicant, please say aye. Right. Aye. aye. And then Beth, let us know what we will need to put on a future agenda. I can um, do that. And then if. If there is not an interview in our future, please let me know because I may, I may want to come back to the discussion. I may think I have some ideas about structures since we don't seem to have a lot of applicants. And can we take some some? Can we try and do things a little differently and see if we can uh, make it a more attractive position? But if we can get someone in as it is now, then that works too. Yep. Okay. All right. I understand what you're saying. It's functionally what you're saying is that we're struggling to find a working super. Yes. And so <laughs> what, what, what can, what can, is, is that something, position. how critical <laughs> it, it's like, can we, is there a different way to skin this cat? Yep. Right. Uh, Gary, from a personnel standpoint, what help can we give you? I mean, I, I'm, I'm hopeful that the, the, uh, the vote today is going to let you move things forward and, uh, and, get things done, which is probably something that you've been waiting on us for. Is there any, it, what else can we do to help you and the highway department serve the town? And if you want to think about it and send us a message, just let us know. And I think Brad's down there on a regular basis. Do you want all new equipment? Hey, I tell my kids it doesn't hurt to ask. The answer's no, say, but you can ask. I was gonna say that because um, actually, I, I met with um, advisory. Mm -hmm. This past, this past Tuesday, and I'm um, looking at the, um, the capital plan because we no longer have a CFPC an committee, one. correct? CFPC. Uh, we uh, do not have an active capital uh, right. committee. No. But there was two. One purchase was scheduled being made on FY24, um, which is not was not even put forth as an article. And one on FY25. Um, both of those things would, been, uh, would come in very handy. Um, certainly help us perform better. We have a lot of time coming up in the spring <coughs> when the season is over that we have to put into our equipment. We've got a, a major brake job that we have to get done. We've got a, uh, we've got to rip apart an um, oil pan underneath and, and, and change all the guts. Um, so there's a lot of things to do. Um, the, the, the fleet is aged, uh, I'll give you that, but um, I, I operate one of the oldest pieces. Uh, I'm very happy with it, other than sliding into a telephone pole. <laughs> <laughs> um, that wasn't because of the equipment. That was because just because yeah. those are the condi road conditions. Yes, so, no, but I'm, I'm very yeah, happy with how, that day. how they kept that equipment up. Yeah. So um, yeah. it runs. It's, it's, it's you don't want the new stuff; it all breaks. Yeah, it's, it's actually incredibly <laughs> impressive. Yeah, the amount of money we saved that yeah. they, that they saved the town and the amount of care they put into that equipment. It's it's, it's unmentioned, almost well, it's mentionable. So it's, thank yeah, you. It's unbelievably yeah. impressive. Yeah, because last time um, I was involved with the actual, even the labor cost of having somebody repair a heavy was $287 an hour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's not even including parts. Mm -hmm. um, so and we virtually, they, I won't say we because I wasn't here at the time, uh, rebuilt the guts of the backhoe. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I say rebuilt, but not to up the, up the snuff yeah. um, because it's band-aided, but it yeah. runs, it operates a year-round piece of equipment, so it works. Um, the heavy trucks that were used for plowing, I, I have not a complaint about any of them. I'm very impressed from what, from what I've seen from where I came from of what these guys do. The small stuff that you have and, and their, their uh, ability to repair. Mm -hmm. So, okay. I guess um, all I can ask of the board, you asked what you can do, is I, I guess all I can ask is for continued support because we're really trying to get stuff done and move forward and, and there's a lot to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm not knocking anybody in the past or the crew, the size, the people. 
Um, there's a lot to do. Yes, there's been a, I have noticed more potholes this year, <coughs> and I don't know if that's just, I don't know if I'm just more tuned to it no, now. No, the roads are I'm just going to start falling apart really yeah, fast now. <laughs> yeah, it's like, which which isn't there for look. What's that? You wear your glasses when you drive down the road? Heck no. <laughs> no. That's why. <laughs> We've like when do you, a, when do you switch to the amount of money into, into cold patch? Mm -hmm. Extraordinary. Especially on one road in particular, which we don't have to talk about. <laughs> it's almost a constant. Yes, it makes I've me very with, happy to talk about that. Right yeah, now. I've met with the residents. Or I've been up close and, and personal with them and gave them recommendations, suggestions, how to repair their issues. They seem very receptive. So, well, in that fact, one of them told me that, that their project will be done by this weekend, so I have been checking on that. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I met with Al today um, just to see exact bounds on the GIS. I, I apologize, but Gary, no, it's, I actually want to hear this stuff, but we can't do it tonight. Can, can, we, can we actually have... We have 30 minutes of time left. Yeah, we have 30 <laughs> minutes of time left to get through like nine items on the agenda. So I, I, I apologize, but, don't, what I, don't apologize. but what I'd like to do, can, can we get on a future agenda of... A recommended road plan, like what the next like three to five projects are that that Gary thinks we need to hit in order to try to. Yeah. I know we're not going to get ahead, but maybe get caught up a little bit. I like overall. that. Mm -hmm. Him and I have talked about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's that's what that's, I would that's I'm what sure. I would love to hear about. Okay. Honestly. Gotcha. Yeah. And then yeah, so that would either be four 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 eighteen. We'll see what the agenda looks like. Um, and then if there's any equipment you need or the repair and replace account needs topping up it's it's that time of year let us know so we can uh, discuss getting it on the warrant okay all right then we because we had a discussion about personnel there's no need to talk about themselves right correct exactly. okay. i've had a discussion with kelly um and i've had this <coughs> with the person um, so we're good mm -hmm. okay okay thank you very much all right kid. thank you so um i will so that takes care of agenda item number six and then i'll take a motion that we pass over number seven uh, motion to pass over. Number seven. Second. All right. All in favor of passing over number seven, please say aye. Aye. All right. And let's see. You want to get your other guests? I was just thinking yeah. that. Don Taft. Uh, let's see. Agenda item number 10, warrant out over request regarding the old roller rink. Good evening. You want to roll 11 into that as well. Right. Yeah, uh, we'll, just, yeah, we'll just go straight to 11 after this. Since you're on a time crunch, I will be quick. We've discussed the, this before. The, we have discussed this before. I came before the board uh, several months ago to make the board aware of it. Um, it's dilapidated. It's falling down. I did take some pictures. I don't know if you care to look at them. Uh, I do have them. But it's town-owned property. It's a liability. It needs to be taken down and cleaned up. Mm -hmm. That's the request for the end. Now, I put a dollar value in there. I did not get estimates for that. I kind of based it on what it cost uh, in reference to cleaning up other buildings on the campground. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would, uh, I guess I would say if, if we're going to do this, I would ask that you, um, can, can you, can you do a little more work on the estimate and help us get the right amount on the warrant article? Because I wouldn't want to put, say, $6,000 in and find out it's a $10,000 I think project. we can put the warrant article, we can vote can tonight put the warrant to put the article, article with out without an to amount. Be right. it, to be determined. Yeah, right. yes, uh, yeah, I can but, do but that. In, 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 in time for, in, but I want it done sufficiently ahead of town meeting that if it's, that we understand its impact on the free cash and if it's going to grow enough that it eats through our buffer, then we, we realize, okay, we're either gonna have to do this, or if we do this, we're gonna have to kick something else off. Our, our recommended list. Understood. So. Yep, I can do that. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay. All right, so I'll take a motion to uh, to consider, uh, to add that to the warrant for Make now. Make a motion to uh, place that on the warrant as an article. Second. All right, all right, thank you. All in favor of placing the, um, the uh, demolition of the old roller rink at 36 Pine Lane uh, onto the uh, warrant, please say aye. 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 Yeah, she said. I didn't hear you. Sorry. Thank you. All right. And I have number 11, the uh, survey markers for high water level. So, um, again, I brought this before the board. Um, actually, that's kind of in limbo at the moment. And that's only because we're waiting for the state fish and wildlife to approve our high water bylaw. 
I see mm -hmm. you on my last correspondence. I, I did. Had the entire I did. I saw, I saw that. Thank you. And we I can just vote on that, it and pass yeah. over it if it's. Well, well, I guess my point is, is that the. We're, we can't put it. We can't you put, put it in. You could put it on the warrant. Uh, yeah, we can't put the marker in until they approve the bylaw, right? That's not you, true. You can put, you, the, you marker can put the marker in. You, right. you just don't have a bylaw to enforce what that what it is. Right. Well, okay. you could have it in place. Right. Mm -hmm. And I do. I did and, get and, a. And, I, and when you have good neighbor voters, if you have it in place and you educate them, mm -hmm. they're going to react to it. A, a lot of the a lot of people will actually react to it appropriately. Right. Now there's always that person. Which mm -hmm. there probably still will be afterwards. But it doesn't matter whether you have a bylaw or not, you're still going to have that. Right. It's, it's like it won't stop everyone, but the sign will encourage more people to realize they shouldn't do it. Yes. Yeah, I mean, my thought is if the, if the state approval of the bylaw blocks us from it's like enforcing it, we could still put it in. Well, they want to enforce it, but that's, that's kind of the holdup. Right, but we can but we can place the sign absolutely, and then and then when they get around to with the exception of the fact that it's their boat ramp and mm -hmm. we would be marking their boat ramp. Well, we would yes, this would uh, the approval would have to note that it would be done in coordination with the state, and because if we put it in, they don't like it, they'll just rip it out, and that's a waste of money. Right. Okay. All right. All right. But uh, that for, for me, for the amount of uh, property damage that this could uh, prevent uh, when it's at high water. It's like it's, it seems like fairly short money to uh, to protect. And I did get an estimate for surveying was about a thousand dollars for to have a local surveyor survey it. Mm -hmm. Both locations or each location? Uh, both both locations. So you're envisioning a thousand dollars for surveying and then about five hundred dollars to get per sign installed? Yeah, I'm, since you're, since I, I basically I what I'm here. thinking is a is a six foot wide yellow stripe across the boat ramp that mm -hmm. says uh, flood zone no wake mm -hmm. end of story okay so it's that's going to weather a bit and it'll, it might have to be repainted if every years. five years that's fine i mean once it's surveyed repainting a line's already painted you don't need the surveyor to know where to paint. correct because i would put a pk nail or a rebar or something at that point and it would last forever mm -hmm. all right Anyone else have questions about this? All right, seems none. I'll take a motion. Uh, motion that we uh, approve this for Warren inclusion in the warrant. Art, in the warrant. Second. All right. All in favor of including this in the warrant, please say aye. 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 And we're good. Thank you. All right. And let's see. And while we are working on this, uh, we uh, will bring Mr. Fromm up. Mr. Fromm, you uh, had a, a, a bylaw request also. Is that all things going on we get, We've got other things, but we'll since you're here, brief. you might as well free up. And yeah, we'll keep it brief. Uh, someone knowledgeable tells me that that probably won't work. Same person told me that uh, the governor is thinking of eliminating boards of health. So it's kind of along the same uh, avenue. It takes a few years to do that, though, so it starts with a warrant article, too. And then another year, and then you have an election, a vote, and then it could take two to three years to eliminate a board of health. But I put, I put to you uh, that that's probably something we should do. We can always change our mind later. But you have um, to wait a year. Mr. Fromm, mm. the uh, the right I, change I, here it has nothing to do with exactly. the board of health. So could we get on the topic that I'm going to? I'm just going to tell you that you know, make of it what you will. Uh, it's probably not going to be a legal thing. That you, know, you probably don't have. Is what I'm oh, you're saying that this bylaw won't fly past the attorney general. I don't think so. I'm okay, that that was one of my concerns, but yeah. I I, th I thought I'd, I I said I've, I've had other people up here, so I thought I would use the chance to talk to. I appreciate you. that, and I think it's worth mm -hmm. discussing very very briefly that uh, certain things affect people's lives in a very big way, and I feel very strongly that we should have the right to vote on bylaws and, and uh, regulations that affect people to that extent, not the day to day administrative things that decide but if we have uh, a board or even this board decided to make a sweeping bylaw that's going to change the way people live I don't feel that two or three people should have the authority to do it it should go to town meeting the following town meeting for ratification before it becomes effective that was the point of that okay attempt. Um, Kelly check me on this a, a bylaw is something that has to be approved by town meeting whereas Correct. boards can can establish regulations and procedures 
Okay. So so to, to, so so I would say that um, just for clarification, yeah. So it's like so whenever you said a board passed a bylaw it should be read as board passed a regulation. I misspoke. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I know. Not not everyone here is as steeped in this whole, especially those who at the home at the home audience. <laughs> and so I just wanted to make sure that that people there at home weren't saying, but they can't. Board of Health can't pass a bylaw. It's like yes, we understand. You got it. All right. Thank I'm you. gonna excuse myself. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. <laughs> All right, so that, so agenda, let's go to number two, security camera server, I think. I thought we had already, I thought the security camera server, I thought we had already voted to go to the uh, uh, advisory and ask for reserve funds two meetings ago. Uh, let's see, I don't, I we thought did. we didn't have the, I thought we didn't, I thought we, we needed, I thought we had to do that based, I thought we needed a proposal to request to firmly to request a specific amount did i miss did, did i mess up on on procedure we at the last meeting that this was discussed you voted to go to seek the reserve funds money to get the server tom said he was going to bring forward a quote that there was a quote out there but he was going to change the figure and this summer that's oh, right. Right. <laughs> yes, that's right. um, and so here we are. And there's Tom. And there's, there's Jacob. Jacob. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I just so can't. we had, uh, I know that you had discussed with uh, Jacob, or Mr. Gorham, excuse me, had discussed with Mr. Gorham just putting in a server that would allow us to utilize our current cameras until we could fund an upgrade in the cameras after town meeting. Mm -hmm. And I believe the amount is um, thirty-six eighty-five, something like that. I do not know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I was looking for the. Um, I don't know. As, as I say. Do you have a soft copy of it? I got one. Pull it up right now. Thank you. This would allow us to be compliant with the storage. Yes. And it would no longer be impossible to get data off of it. Is that correct? That is correct. Thank you. Well, I don't think he's going to make his job more difficult than it is. We <laughs> went to the trouble of building a player so that we could actually. This is just the town hall, or this, is that also hard? Well, so the intent with the with the Warren article, or with the tech budget, was to replace the cameras and the systems in both locations. And what does the fire department have? I'm not aware that they have. But that would be their own budget anyways. No. Right. Yes. Do the existing cameras support audio, or are they video? They do not. Okay. They barely support video. Have you <laughs> seen the photos? Have you seen the footage? I have not. So how much was the camera upgrade? Was that in there too? It yeah. was, yeah. It's um, 8,500. Is it? I did not say. Oh, no, I'm sorry. 3,650 installation. 3,600. Eight new cameras for 36. 36, yeah. not 36 a piece, 36 total, correct? Total, yeah. Yeah, so 3,600 for eight new cameras. But it will support 
so I'll just remember. So right, but I so I, I mean, I guess the question, the, the reason why I'm asking that question is I don't think we've spent a penny of the reserve fund yet. We haven't, however, in order to access the reserve fund, it must be extraordinary and unforeseen. Yes. If this works, it doesn't qualify. The server does. Oh, oh I see. Got it. Okay. Because because uh, just because they're so bad, I figured they might almost qualify, but not. Qualify. Well, the function in language <laughs> that it replaces the system. Right. But. Um, but you feel it's more appropriate. I feel that it is more appropriate okay. to to just right. do the one. So and not so both. I'll make a motion that we again. And we request the $4,750 from the reserve fund and authorize the replacement of the server at the earliest convenience. Second. All right. All in favor of requesting the uh, release of reserve funds for the uh, for this project, please say aye. 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 All right. Uh, let's see. All right. I will get that. I will get that signed and into the advisory box tonight before I leave. Do you have the form, the blank form? No, I do not, but I was going to ask, <laughs> I was gonna ask Karen to get me the blank form. Karen, do you have the blank form? I, I, the I might. Uh, and uh, Kelly, I, I might have an old copy know. floating around somewhere that I could um, zero out. Yeah, you actually could. Since, yeah. since I was on advisory two years ago. When you were first here. Yeah. All right, and so, all right, good. So that's... That's what we need. Sure. That is done. That is approved. So let's see. So we have uh, elementary school roof, grant writer, and minutes. All right, elementary school roof. Um, at our last meeting, we had uh, discussed um, approaching the school about uh, a, a working group or a committee to uh, look at the roof. Uh, they were very interested in that. I've already received um, um, the, the facilities contacts from the school to discuss this. So um, the way we discussed it was that it would be, the way I proposed it to them was that it would be an odd number of people, someone from the select board, someone from the school committee, and then after that it was kind of vague. I don't know if we want, to, if it makes sense to include the two facilities people in it or they would simply be advisory uh, or con consultative. And we should also, we will also want to think of who would we want to round this out to three or five people. My thought is I don't think it needs more than five people. And I think it could work with three plus the two consultative. Um, what would the charge be? Um, their ch uh, the charge here would be to um, explore and um, it would be to provide recommendations um, based on technical detail and price of options to alleviate um, uh, roof deficiencies at the elementary school. Something like that is what I have in mind, is charging them. Uh, I would like the charge to allow them to go full on. They could recommend replacing the entire roof if they could justify it. Anywhere from spot repairs to a, a new roof, if that's if it's really like $100,000 more than replacing half of it. I've kind of saved my <laughs> I mean, but it's like, it just seems like we, we I think a focused group between the school and this office would help move Can that you forward. Repeat your opinion because I don't remember it. My my opinion is <laughs> it's a twenty five year roof for a near thirty. We need to just replace it. Just replace the suit design. Yeah. So and, and the challenge is, right, is and it looks like the two quotes that they have is that one is for replacement of a limited area and the other one is looks like it's for either replacement or restoration of is 33,000 square feet the full roof? No. It's only it's only this section here. Okay. And the problem issues are here and here with the water that comes down. Okay. So fundamentally it's the, these two valleys here and yep. that's why the ballasted EPDM right is only 8,000 square feet because they'd only be replacing Correct. these bits here mm -hmm. versus the other would be the, the full. Right. The full, I guess when I said full roof, I misspoke in that we're talking the full forward building roof yeah. inclusive of those problems. And I think it 
in one in one of these pages here. They actually have it highlighted. Yep. Oh, there's yep. that. There you go. Why is one guaranteed for twenty five and one guaranteed for different materials? That's those those guarantees are always based off of the material. So one of them well, is a study. Why did they oh, serve with twenty year and then when they have the thirty year they switch it to the third year and that's why why would you say it's just the materials. So why they so so fundamentally the one with the Maybe there's a different one for it that shows that part of the roof. I'm not sure you can do that wider area. With it looks like there's pages missing. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah, thinking. Well, it says 1 to 6 and 12, and there are 12 pages here, so. Yeah. So they're not missing. But there is another report that shows. Yeah, you're with the yellow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's the one I was looking for. And it basically had outlined that, that front, area. front and yep. section. Yeah, and that's fine. I mean, if it were my house, I would not want to throw good money after bad money. Right. <laughs> so you're looking to do, what do you think that the committee is going to I, th I think they're. I think they're going to. I mean, this this report gives us a couple options. I think it's it's recommending a saying this is the course of action we should take to best protect that building from moisture. But they don't even know how bad it's going to be until they get in yeah, there. Yeah, they don't until know how bad it's going to be until, yeah. they, until they start taking it apart. That's why they've got the shiny bright yellow disclaimer there. Mm -hmm. I don't know why anyone, you know, you see schools all across the New England. Why they have flat roofs? Well, a combination of flat roofs and all those complicated geometries that are on mm -hmm. some of these roofs. Because every time you have a valley, you have an opportunity for a leak. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just like roofing. It should be just a square roof. Mm -hmm. so. Put a little swale on it. And yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't want to hold this up, so... Fundamentally, <coughs> the school's asked to us is just that this go on the. No, they have not asked for any warrant article. They no, have I think, I think part of the intention was that this would goose things forward in order to move the project forward. Okay, so, it's so like, what are you looking for? Are you looking I, for a proposal for a, a school roof committee? I, I am looking for. I'm looking for a motion to establish a committee to. Review the situation and make recommendations for the. Um, yes, yeah, that's the president. Yeah. Okay, so you want a school roof committee of seven people or five? I was thinking. Um, I was thinking three to five. We could include the two. Uh, in, we could do five, including the two facilities representatives. Uh, select board, school board, two facilities representatives, and someone else. And, a, and an ad hoc member. Yes. So uh, I'll make the motion to constitute a a school roof committee um, with the membership as described by the chair. Second. Right. All in favor of appointing that committee, please say aye. 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 And do we have enough detail on the charge of that committee? Um, you're saying that it, um, let me see what the charge is that it can provide recommendations on technical detail and price for options to relieve the roof deficiencies of the four elementary schools. That's a pretty good charge. All right. Yeah, I, th I think it's pretty clear what we want done. So we, I think the only thing is that do you want a time certain? Do you want them to bring something forward by some period of time? I don't know. Part of, part of me says that it's like it's we're too close to the this town meeting for that group to finish, though we could get lucky, in which case then there's not a lot of time pressure. Why don't we say within 90 days of appointment, because we don't have a committee yet, we just have a charge. Sounds good. Okay. It's like, if they need more, they can ask for more, and we can extend it if we feel the need. And then the thought is that the, uh, we would ask the school board who they, want, who they want on there, we'd decide who from us would be on there, and then we'd decide who the, the ad hoc person is. Yeah. So. Have you spoken to the school committee or the 
facilities managers to see if they are amenable to doing this thing? I have spoken to Deb Boyd, the superintendent, and Megan on the school board, and they were both um, they wrote Excellent. positive to this idea. Excellent. And um, and Deb sent me the names. Deb sent me the names of the facilities people. So yes, I, I did she loop them in before I decided they should be on this committee. They were volunteers. They were volunteers. <laughs> I like that. I really All right, so that's, all right, I don't know if we're going to make it, but all right, so any other, dis so I think we've done what we need to do on the roof. Good. All right, grant writer replacement. Um, with Kathy has, we've already discussed Kathy's resignation. Um, two things. Do we need any authorization to post the position? Or can that just? No. Okay, good. I'm just checking. And then as I'm sorry, I don't mean to sound like that. Okay. It just comes out like that because. I'm just surprised sometimes. Okay, no, and it's like, I, I'm just surprised by the question. All right, no, that's fine. Ha have, we po have we posted it? <laughs> I have put it up on the uh, town website. It has not been advertised in the paper. Okay. Make a motion to advertise in the paper. Second. All right, all in favor of advertising this position in the paper per town bylaw, please say aye. 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 It's like, um, would it also make sense to advertise this through the uh, municipal association, since I think a lot of the Kelly, is this, would this be, I would we find I've never seen a request for a grant writer through the internet. Then we won't do it. We will not go first. <laughs> That's fine. Now, as, a, as an interim matter, Kathy's last day is in April, and I don't know that we will have it filled, we will have the position filled by then. So, I am thinking that we would, uh, that we would want to identify someone to take on these responsibilities in uh, on an interim basis because if we don't manage these if we don't administer and manage these grants then we're going to have to send the money back and we're going to have trouble getting more grants so i want to we have a recording of what she's actively managing today she and she lindsay is, is also working with her currently to, to get up to she's speed trying to um, help lindsay get up to speed yes. to yes. and take And my conversations with on, um, sorry. On I'm yeah. sorry. She's working on the list. Okay. Yes. My right. my understanding also is that Kathy's attempting to close out several projects or get them to good resting points where they're at a good stable point and suitable to hand off rather than handing off something that where it's half cooked. Right. It's like but that brings me to the point of uh, of identifying someone to take this on and if, and since Kathy has been working with Lindsay, I think that it would make it would make sense. I, uh, Lindsay has um, I have asked Lindsay if she would be interested in this, and she has uh, said yes. So from a from a legal standpoint, is this could we? What could we do here to make sure the uh, that the position is uh, that the duties are executed by someone so in the town? You could make a motion presently. Because her job duties are not covering. Correct. Right. Until so the position not. is filled um, at the same rate that you're paying capital. Okay. Or a rate, at oh, least. Oh, yeah. Yeah, That's because you don't just give somebody the job and not the set. Yeah, right. It's actually, I, right. I like that. So I'll make a motion that we appoint uh, Lindsay Brock Brockwood. 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 Um, I put Rockwell in the emails yeah. for like the first three months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, as, as interim grant writer um, and that work executed shall be at the rate currently uh, uh, allocated for Kathy. Mm -hmm. Second. All right. All in favor of appointing Lindsay Rockwood as interim grant writer um, to be effective on the date of Kathy's resignation. Uh, and, or I'm sorry. With the understanding that it will become effective on the date of Kathy's res resignation. Second. I mean, yeah. Please say aye. 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 All right. And then, and Kathy has indicated to me that uh, she will be available to assist um, as as available um, if Lindsay has questions to assist with the transition. Uh, or I'm sorry, not the transition to assist with the uh, interim period. Okay. And I, 
suspect Lindsay may want to apply for the permanent position, and if so, we'll evaluate her with all the other candidates. Do we want to pass? Do you want to give me? Do you want to give? Or do you just want to try? Because right. I think I'll that. I'll give you a motion to continue this meeting. For 15 minutes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. Second? Second. All right. All right. All in favor of continuing the meeting past our two hour time limit, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Um, according to my notes, the only things left are 15 and 17, and we're passing over 15. Um, whoa, whoa, whoa. 13. 13. 13? Oh, you're right. I, I, had a, I had a check off next to it. I apologize. Brad, uh, I checked it off by accident. Yeah, that's all right, so uh, agenda item 13, select board agenda setting. So it would be nice to be prepared if we could have, and I don't know what the rules are with this, like a shared Google Doc or Excel Doc of just what the agenda Ooh. items are. Yeah. Coming up, well, I, I had idea the, so you can I, see live, so you know when it's I, up. Right. I had the I had the same idea. I, I was uh, my intention was to explore that with um, to explore that idea <laughs> and just have a document, and we'd have like here's what we're proposing, here's what we're considering for the next meeting, and right. in this case it'd be four four, and here are agenda ideas that right. aren't going into the next meeting, but are things that we might want to talk about at some point with, right. tar with target dates. So we can keep right. our and with, with, a, with a bullpen, right. so to speak. Right. Um, I, I, am, I am fine with that. That doesn't violate open meeting. It does not. You, can, you, it's you can actually discuss agenda, the agenda, you just and can't not discuss. violate the open meeting. So, no. example. I think the town should buy Kelly a puppy. Okay, that's an agenda item. Kelly gets a puppy on the agenda. Mm -hmm. The reason Kelly gets a puppy is because violation. You can't say that part. That's <laughs> <Right>. discussion. <laughs> so. um, and another <laughs> thing along you that You realize line. when you leave, you're getting a dog shit cake. <laughs> <laughs> I want a puppy. So along those same lines, another <laughs> kind of request, and I don't know if it's allowed. So sometimes, Things like, for instance, this evening, even this, I don't see this until I get here. It's usually... Like a lot of the documents that it says in your packet, yeah. we don't get until we get here, and it'd be nice to review them so ahead of time. So as things are added to the agenda, there's a couple options. Yeah. As things are added to the agenda, those proposed documents can be post, can be listed in or available in a shared file. Okay. As they're pulled, there's no reason for them to be there, though. So if the agenda shifts, there's no reason for them to be there. Yeah. The other option is to attempt to set the agenda sooner and not change it. Right. Right? Because this thing is a living, breathing document, and it's changed literally up to the minute of posting, which is one of the reasons posting has been pushed to the 48-hour mark as opposed right. to the week before. Because you post it, then you change it, then you repost it, then you change it, then you repost it, then you change it, then you repost it. Which is what was happening in the past. Um, so you can set up a rule for your board that the agenda will be finalized as of this date, other than for emergencies. That'll give you a few days to review the documents. That's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is uploading them into a shared file so that you can review the documents, knowing that if the item is pulled, it's you. There was no reason for you to read it this week. I don't, and I don't care about that. I just want to be yeah. better prepared. So, yeah, there, there are definitely ways to do this. Yeah, I mean, I, I would like to get again, the agenda no posted. No commentary, right. no discussion. Right. This is just yes. for reviewing. Yeah. Except right now, because it's on the meeting. Right, agenda. but again, the agenda items, you can, you can actually. Yeah, we, we can say, I wish to discuss this. Well, if I have a question a about something like, you know, for instance, the. Uh, uh, whatever I was just looking at with Jacob, I could reach out to Jacob ahead of the meeting. Right, right. Say, hey, what's, what's yeah, right. One, one, thing, one thing we could do is we could try and uh, create a little uh, something in OneDrive with Microsoft and just have all the attachments and documents specific to the agenda in a folder so that people can grab it. Yeah. It's like so. We'll have to. Yeah. We can work that out. I mean, I would like to. I would like to get the agenda done earlier. I was hoping to. Uh, I stopped by last Thursday and thought I would talk to Karen, but she had a dentist appointment, and so I missed her. And then we started talking about the agenda on Monday, and there was a lot of back and forth about it this time around. It was very busy. So, yeah, I, I under, so yes, so I. So, what do you want to do so that we know what to do going forward? You want to do the OneDrive, the shared OneDrive? Or, and then Karen can put the template for the agenda as it appears right now, and if it's edited, you'll see it real time? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 
I, I think we should have a. Uh, you don't actually have a motion. Yeah, a, a shared, a, sh a, a document we can all view that will have the proposed agenda, the, the projected agenda items for the next meeting, along with a separate area for bullpen for things that we're not, that we, we're thinking about discussing. And then we can create a OneDrive folder with date specific, um, or we can create a OneDrive area and then folders for here are the documents for the. Um, 321 meeting, here are the documents for the 44 meeting, here are the documents for the 418 yeah. meeting, yada, yada, yada. And then a column. Yeah, keep, and then. Keep, keep push off, push off, move out, you yeah. know, needs more detail first, that kind of thing. Yeah, and my, my goal would be to get the agenda posted publicly earlier and then we would uh, try and make one change um, Tuesday afternoon to account for any adjustments, but the thought being that you maybe get. You would post it Monday or you would post it on Thursday? Posted Thursday and then do an update on Tuesday. So, that yeah, being the, the case, the agenda would be posted for the next meeting for this month. Drink all that water, so which is actually next month. <laughs> would be next Thursday. Correct. Yes. Okay. I just want to make sure that. Yes. There may be an adjustment period where it first gets post Monday morning and then and adjust on Tuesday and then as we get our legs under ourselves we can push it back to Thursday. How quick can we set that up, James? Oh, I just read that. Yeah, I already I already created a uh, a Word doc that could be set up for the agenda that could be shared. That's pretty easy. And actually, it might just be good to keep that for that to live in the OneDrive agenda area. Yeah. So all the agenda stuff is in one place. Yes. Yes. All right. All right. And then you pass over 15. So, yeah, so, okay, so I think that closes out 13. 15, um, I will take a motion to pass over that because we don't have anything to vote on. Well, we'll just pass over 15 then. All right. We've got nothing to vote on. We don't right, have to pass it over. All right, we don't have to vote on it. No. All right. We, no, just, we don't have to vote to pass it over. We just agree to pass it over. Yep. All right. I'm 15. Motion to approve the minutes from 2 one twenty four. All right, let's give, let's just wait a moment for Brad to come back before we approve the minutes, just in case he has anything. Karen, did the, did the minutes, did you send my yeah, directions I, to, the, to the rest of the board? Uh, no, she can't send the directions to the no. corrections. Okay. All right, then, oh, then corrections, corrections. Yeah, corrections. yes. No, because it was, it, it, okay, it was that's fine. Minor. That's Okay. Yep. Well, no, no. I mean, well, what one was a spelling error. The other one, the other one was a clarification. So, okay. So, I'll wait for Brad to come back before I, so that he he can participate in the discussion. Hey, Brad. We are talking about minutes. Yep. And I had one thing in the minutes for February first that I wanted to add. It. Specifically, there is there was a section where um, it talked about um, Kermit Eaton talking about the, uh, the work that the Council on Aging, and I distinctly remember at that point asking him to restrict his comments to the um, Senior Center Building Report. Correct. And I would, I would like the, uh, the minutes to reflect that. Okay. And, okay. Say, and so I, and so I, would, I will take a, mo a motion to approve the, the minutes for 2-1 as amended as I described. So moved. Second. All right, all in favor of approving the minutes for 2-1 as uh, amended as described, please say aye. Aye. And uh, let's see. And then I'll take a motion for 229. I, I figure a, spell, a spelling error doesn't require our approval to change. I make a motion to approve the select board minutes for 229. Right. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, thank you. Karen. Motion to adjourn. Karen. Second. It's R E G A N. I know. That is correct. All right, um, motion to adjourn at 825. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you, everybody.